where it makes me think, because you know, being a student of religion, and that's sort of my area, uh, one thing I've noticed and observed is often when people go on a spiritual quest and they're on a religious search, it, it's for a hunger in need. And, uh, and often, yeah, I mean, there's legitimacy to it, definitely. Uh, but often we come into religion in the quest for healing our fundamental dysfunctionality in some way. <laughs> and ironically, sometimes religion can just sort of exploit the dysfunctionality and become a system of further manipulation, exploitation, and, and um, uh, buttressing our insecurities by uh, giving us a sense of false power in life. Or religion can become a source of profound shifting of our sense of self and healing of this alienation we have internally, right? Um, and really be a source of coming into wholeness. And it seems to me that the same drive behind religion, which is this quest for healing of our dysfunction, that that is also then the same drive in our quest for relationships and that sense of connection. Is that? Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. And, but then, so you're saying that, that we attract people that kind of would play a role that's intended to be a journey for our healing of that dysfunctionality or where we've got, you know, issues. Yes. <laughs> so Should we give you an example? Yes, give us some examples. Yes, give Shall us we use example. ourselves maybe? Sure, that sounds just great. So I, um, I grew up in a very lovely Presbyterian home. My dad was a Presbyterian minister, and he was also a man on a mission. So he spent a good three weeks out of every month away, out of our house. And he'd come home, and he was often very stressed out, and he had headaches. And um, we were off, my brother and I were told, you know, Shh, it's not time right now. Your dad is stressed out, or he needs quiet. And we were, we were left with the message that he has important things to focus on. And as a young girl, to me, this meant I'm not important. And that's something that I carried around with myself for my whole life. And now I'm walking around as a young girl, I'm not important. What is going to make me feel important again? What we're told in our culture is Da da da. <laughs> My soulmate. And so off I go and I see this guy lecturing one day at a stage and I think there's something about that guy up there doing important things in the world, although this didn't quite clue into me the same way at the time. But there he is talking about relationship. How much more perfect can you possibly get? <laughs> Relationship he's talking about. And I, I, come, I come into this uh, relationship with a, with a history that's quite different. I grew up in an uh, alcoholic home. My father was an uh, Irish binge drinking alcoholic, classic Irish binge drinking alcoholic. When he came home drunk, you know, I, I, could, I could read the way he walked up the steps, the horror, the degree of horror that was about to take place. And I had three sisters and a mother, and I, I, my job was to take care of my, the women in the family. I became the protector. I became the good little dad at the age of nine or 10. I was willing to sacrifice my life to protect the women in, in the home. And so I, I prided myself on being this little crusader, this little superboy, later to become Superman, the one that could take care of, of women in trouble. And uh, all the while underneath that, I, I had what we call a suspicion of self about me that was that, oh my God, you know, I'm, the older I got, the more I was turning into a man, the more I was terrified that I was going to become, my ultimate fear would be I'd become my dad. And so I, I, would, I would push down, I'd hide all those questions about myself and instead replace it with this, here I come to save the day, God, right? Like just... Hero. <laughs> Hero. And she was looking, what is she looking for again? Knight in Knight. shining armor. Yes. Yes. Right, so we Finally, can come together. Very important. And I should also mention, when we all take on these suspicions about ourselves, and it's, it's, it's a very painful process. Something happens, now it feels like I'm not important, and we think to our inner, not in a cognitive sense, but the first thought is, okay, who I am is not good enough, what do I need to do to get the love back? And we try behavior A, it doesn't work. Behavior B, it doesn't work. Behavior C, bingo, it works. 
who I am is not good enough, I will become this. And for me, it was I will become good, I will become smart, I will become polite, because my dad liked all three. Where I did get his attention was chatting at the dinner table. So here I see this guy, right, lecturing on relationships. And I'm not going to come over to him and say, you know, hi, I feel like I'm really lacking inside and I'm not important and I really need you to love me so that I can feel okay about myself. <laughs> Security! <laughs> That's not how it's going to work. Instead, what do I do? I put on my nice shiny mask and I go, hello, that was a brilliant lecture that you just gave. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. And I understand that you just, uh, you just left, your, your, your marriage just broke up. It did. We just didn't seem to really connect. Really? Mm -hmm. He didn't want to stare into your eyes and never want to take them off. He didn't want to stare into the depths of your soul and see the divinity of your existence. He didn't want to do any of those things, right? So when we're first coming together, the promise is here, it's not conscious, understand, and we're making fun of ourselves, but this was truly what happened. Um, the promise is here is somebody I'm finally going to be important to. And very soon, as we start coming together, the thing that I was attracted to becomes the problem. And she's paying attention to me, and she looks so... Um, Normal. <laughs> I'm, you know, Is that a compliment? I'm not yeah. sure. So, but so, 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 um, something I can count on. She's paying attention to me. She likes what I'm saying. You know, she, I feel good in her presence. She's, 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 she's paying attention to me. And that very attention started to turn into, would you just lay off? Like, can I, can I just have a little breathing space? I just, I just feel like I, I don't have any space around you. Like you're, you know, you're, you're needy. You know, if you would spend a little more time at home, maybe I would be happier here. But you're just always flying all over the place, Mr. Relationship Guru Guy. Maybe if you were just a little happier, I'd want to come home more often. Maybe if you actually did what you preached, I would be a little happier. Aha, uh -huh. there we are. <laughs> so it, it comes to this place, right, where it's now it's a crisis because now we're discovering I can't get that thing that will help me to feel important over here. And in fact, we're close. So now what's happening at an unconscious level is I'm afraid, uh-oh, you're going to see that I'm really not okay if you get any closer. Right. And, and it starts to tread on that old wound of my father out there doing important things in the world, off traveling, and now I want to explain my pain by him. And there I am. You know, what did I, what did I pride myself basing my identity on? Being the savior of women, right? I, and I don't want to be like my dad. So I, all my youth, I could have been an ax murderer in my family and they would have found some good in it. I never had one piece of criticism ever from women in my life. So the moment she says, you know, if, if you would, what time are you coming home? This, I can't handle any kind of criticism because I have to be Superman. If I'm not Superman, I must be Darth Vader in my mind. Oh. And Darth Vader is going to be my dad. I don't want to feel that. I don't want to feel that. I don't want to just get too close to that. Oh my God, I, my fear is I'm becoming my dad. She's upset. I am. I, a woman is upset at me. Who am I if you're upset at me? I can't handle that. And I'm not going to communicate my fear about myself. No, I'm just going to say back off. She's going to get my guard instead of what the guard is guarding. And yet, to come back to your question, the ultimate purpose, spiritual purpose of relationship is for what I'm guarding and what she's guarding to meet each other and to heal our past rather than rescuing ourselves from our past by having rules in the relationship so I never have to feel that suspicion I have about myself and she doesn't have to feel the suspicion that she's not good enough. And, and couples establish rules to rescue each other 
And they, you, wor you worship each other when you do it good, and you punish each other when you do it wrong. And you were supposed to rescue me. And that's not the function and purpose of relationship, folks. And yet in the West, we think it is. Because ultimately, if you think about it, a friendly universe is not going to let any of us wander around believing these things about ourselves, that I'm not good enough, that I'm not important. Whether it be through relationship or anything else, a friendly universe would go, have a look at that, because it's not true. I don't have to be Superman in order to be loved. And don't you think that is the key? I know because I, I did the, one of your courses, The Awakening, and you know, just from so many other things I've done, Red Sea and experience, what have you, that that is the universal problem with us, the human race, is this sense of inner shame that we just so have. And, and it's amazing how it's there so quickly. Uh, I mean, I'm just so absurd because in having you, I think you only realize it fully when, you have, when you're a parent and you're raising a child, and you can see how easily and how quickly they right away internalize guilt and shame, even when they don't have any reason to feel guilty or shame. It's almost like, I don't know, we so easily do that to think, oh, there's something wrong with me. I'm failing. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable enough. And there's this inner disconnect, a fundamental inner alienation with ourselves, our fundamental selves, that I'm just not good enough. And that, and then we have this fear. Oh my goodness! I don't want anybody else to know. I got to put up the front that wow, aren't I super? I mean, I'm hot. I'm just everything. And um, and we have put this fake guard that we always have up. And that's how we meet each other. It's always with those personas, those masks. And yet we're all crying deep down inside, like oh, I just want to be. I just want to let the card down. Okay. I just want to know that I really am lovable. <laughs> and the irony is, even if our masks work and we attract the love object and there he is on his knees just going, you are it for me. Yeah. <laughs> the irony is that, that it, love can't get in through a mask or a defense system. Right. Because there would be a little thought, well, if you really knew me, you wouldn't be saying that. Yeah. So it, even if it works, even if our strategies work, they don't work.